Good morning, friends. It is good to be with you. I am Janie Seltzer, Janie Poet, and I'm here live in the Sacred Garden where I give this garden to the glory of God. That's why it's the Sacred Garden. Sacred means set apart. And this, my entire backyard, has been set apart for the glory of God. And everyone seems to enjoy it. So that's a good thing, right? So last week, I gave you an overview of the parable in the garden. The garden has seven sacred signposts to help you in your spiritual journey. And that's why I have my journey hat on. And we are doing a journey together. My heart is to nourish your soul so that you may grow more whole. I'm the spiritual director for the Zig Ziglar International Family and here at Hidden Life Ministries in Carlsbad, California. We want people, and it's never more needed than today, to understand how to hide their life in Christ. Paul said, set your mind on things above, not on the earth. For you have died, and your real life is hidden with Christ in God. That doesn't mean we hide away and don't engage in the world. Quite the opposite, actually. We're empowered, infused by the love of God. And that's my hope and prayer for you today as we go a little more deeply into the first sacred signpost. So let me go over, first of all, the seven signposts. Okay, so the first signpost is sweetness. The second signpost is secrets. The third signpost is surrender. The fourth is struggles. The fifth is stillness. The sixth is suddenness. And the seventh is seeing. Hmm. That's the journey. It begins and continues. It doesn't stop. We are, we are in a path of the Lord's design, each one of us very uniquely, but it is always with the Lord in front. He is our good shepherd, which brings me to the sweetness seat. I'm going to take you up to that seat it's also a place where I have women's retreats. If you're interested, ladies, reach out and let me know. But we're gonna head up the hill to the sweetness seat. Now, there are gonna be three dogs all around, so get, be patient as we head up the hill. Let's go. Come on, come on, come on, baby cakes. Yeah. All right. I know, she's ready. All right, here we go. You take the lead. You take the lead, girl. Let's go. Hi, Rudy. Come on, boy. Okay, so we're heading around the path. There goes baby cakes. We're headed around the path to the beginning. Up the stairs and up to the sweetness seat, which you will see shortly. This garden, as I've shared with you, is a garden designed by God's vision within me. I can't explain it. It was quite a journey for me. And it explains the, journey, the spiritual journey. So here we go, baby cakes. We're going to get situated right over here in the sweetness seat. So let me turn the camera around. Okay, here comes Sweden. <laughs> Hi, Sweden. We even have Sweden joining us today. Hi, girl. It's unusual. She's our, our smallest. She's the queen. <laughs> she's, a, she's a sweetheart. She's 13 years old. And here comes Rudy. He can't find a place to sit. Come on, Rue. You can find, come on, right here. Come on. Yes, there we go. I think everyone has a seat now. And I hope you found a seat. Take your seat and let's talk about sweetness. You know, the human heart longs for beauty. God designed us that way. His intention is that we might come 
slowly but surely to the realization that he is beautiful. And that would be my topic for today. God is beautiful. <laughs> Do you realize that? Do you understand and embrace? Maybe not. Maybe, maybe you only know a God of wrath. Maybe you were raised in a faith tradition where your fingers were wrapped and worse if you didn't do everything right. Um, I know quite a few people with that experience. Unfortunately, human beings don't do a very good job very often in radiating the beauty and the goodness of God. I know that our Lord God can rescue you, if that's you, from those feelings that God is just a punishing God, a God of hell's fire and brimstone. Do you know the truth is that all of that is actually the being separated from God. In other words, when we separate ourselves from God who is beautiful, all we're left with is darkness and terrible, terrible pain. That's why I'm so passionate to invite you into the beauty of the Lord God. Um, how do I know God is beautiful? Well, first of all, I know God is beautiful by his word. And I'm going to read an incredible passage, one of my favorites. I always say that, right? <laughs> um, Psalm 84, if you want to be turning to it. But I also know God is beautiful by my own experience of God. And so what we have is the human experience wrapping itself into the holy experience. That's our goal. Because if we can wrap our hearts around the holy experience, make it our intention to move towards God, we will experience the glory and the beauty of the Lord God. He is our sweetness. And that's why as infants, it's little infants who are physically born, they need lots of love. They need lots of nurture. And so do new believers in Christ. Lots of love, lots of nurture. And that love and nurture from Jesus will hold them secure as the path becomes more difficult. I personally can attest to that. My experience has shown me that the Lord nurtured me with so much love for so long that when the storms of life came, and they did, I still believed, even though it was hard and even though my feelings didn't feel that way, I still believed that God was good, that he would rescue me out of this dark place into his light, which he did. So turn with me for a few minutes. I'm going to read to you Psalm 84. It is um, a stunning psalm. How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord of heaven's armies. I long, yes, I faint with longing to enter the courts of the Lord with my whole being body and soul, I will shout joyfully to the living God. Even a sparrow finds a home, and the swallow builds her nest and raises her young at a place near your altar. O Lord of heaven's armies, my King and my God, what joy for those who live in your house, always singing your praise. What joy for those whose strength comes from the Lord, who have set their minds or their hearts on pilgrimage. There's intention right there. Who have set their hearts on a pilgrimage to Jerusalem or to the Lord God himself. When they walk through the valley of weeping, it will become a place of refreshing springs. The autumn rains will clothe it with blessings. They will continue to grow stronger and 
each of them will appear before God. Oh, Lord of Heaven's armies, hear my prayer. Friends, let this be your prayer right now. Oh, Lord of Heaven's armies, hear my prayer. Listen, oh God of Jacob. A single day in your courts is better than a thousand elsewhere. I'm sorry, I skipped a verse, so let me go back. Oh God, look with favor upon your anointed. A single day in your courts is better than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather stand at the threshold of the house of my God than to live a the good life ha, ha, in the home of the wicked. For our Lord God is a son and a shield. Lots of sun beaming on me. I'm glad I have my hat on. Our Lord God is a sun. And that word means a brilliant light. Our Lord God is a brilliant light and our protection or our shield. He gives us grace and glory. The Lord will withhold no good thing from those who do what is right. O oh, Lord of heaven's armies, what joy for those who trust in you. I don't know if you counted how many times the word joy came up. Um, I actually didn't, but I could probably do it very quickly right now, at least four or five times. The, what joy, <laughs> yes, there it is. I will shout joyfully to the living God, verse 2. Verse 4, what joy for those who live in your house. What was that? Not, you're going to hit me with a stick. Not, you're going to tell me everything I did wrong. Not, you're going to beat me down until I submit. No, what joy for those who live in your house. That's what you have to look forward to, friends. If you set your heart and mind towards pilgrimage with Jesus. He's the one who knows the way. He is the way. He is the good shepherd. Tell Jesus, be my shepherd. Show me the path. And may I experience your nurture, your joy, your comfort. May I be your child. I trust in you, not in myself. That's how we turn from ourself to him. We say, Lord, not my will, but yours be done. Every day, every day it's your intention. If you make that your intention every day, you will stay on his path and you will experience his sweetness. So, Psalm 84, how lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord, my God the Lord of Heaven's armies, which is often translated Sovereign Lord, but it means the Lord of Heaven's armies. We're talking Mighty God, the Prince of Peace, Yahweh, Yehovah, Elohim. It is Elohim, rather, Yahweh. I want to say um, Yehovah, Elohim, that's what I meant to say, which is often how the Hebrew um, expresses Lord, Yehovah Elohim, which, the, as you probably know, the devout Jews don't even say the name of God because it's so holy, so powerful. You know, friends, I thought I would just share a couple of poems from my sweetness experience. Um, you hear me, um, I do um, spoken word poems. If you don't know about that, um, you can go to my YouTube channel, um, which you just go to at Janie Poet, and you can hear just the poem alone, a standalone poem. I love to do that. But I thought today, when I turned to my collection, of poems that have to do with the sweetness of the Lord God. I was kind of overwhelmed. <laughs> I was overwhelmed by the collection 
which only resonates to me and to you how much I experience the sweetness of God. I'll give you a little sampling, just a small sampling of what I'm talking about. This one is called Divine Joy. God of my life, as I rest in you, I find joy for the journey, grace for the day, absorb your own power and wonders divine. Find all the life that I need to find. Hmm. Friends, if you're lagging in love, if you're lagging in joy, if you're lagging in grace for the day, if you notice, I started this with God of my life as I rest in you. We begin in a place Think of it as the child being cuddled by the Lord. We rest in Him. And as we rest in Him and hear His heartbeat, if you will, His love, His joy, His grace seeps into us and gives us our daily manner, our strength for the day. That's one. Here's one about the sweetness of Jesus Himself. I'll just read a portion of this poem. It's called Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus of Nazareth, calm, confident, creator of the universe, humble savior, shepherd king, without pomp or the need for applause. He is the giver of justice, the healer of the injured, beautiful in gentleness, kindness, truth, full of goodness for the bruised, broken, beleaguered. He will not reject, cast aside, dismiss, or overlook the poor in body or spirit. He is generous in grace. And then this one. This is one of the earliest poems that I wrote about the sweetness of the presence of God, and it remains one of my favorites. Beauty touches the heart when Jesus comes, lifts into flight what's lost in deep night, loves into life, quiets strife, makes eyes bright. Friends, there was a time in my life when the brightness was out of my eyes and I was lost in darkness, not of my own doing, but the result of being caught up in some terrible circumstances with my extended family. I didn't know where to turn. And so I would turn to Jesus, just crying out and saying, Lord, I need you. I need your help. I, I don't desire to keep going. I'm so broken. And he loved me. He loved on me and in me and through me. And he literally did this in my life. Beauty touched my heart when Jesus came. And he will yours as well. And finally, I could go on and on. Literally, I have <laughs> dozens. I'll spare you today. I'll come back to the sweetness seat. But for today, let me end with this. His face kindles the universe with life and heals the broken heart. Trees and animals thrive, the hills alive with the glory of God. And I, like a child at mother's breast, search his face so full of grace. Radiance flows, fills, steady soul in time and place. Holy Father, I pray that my friends would find steadiness, would find manna, would find joy in their journey because you are at their right hand, because you are their gentle shepherd who knows the way, who is the way. Lord Jesus, I give you all praise and glory. You are the way, the truth, and the life. And no one comes to the Father except through you. 
Oh, may my friends turn and look and look into your face. You will forgive them and love them and lead them into the way everlasting. I pray in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Friends, thank you for being with me. We'll begin, we'll continue rather, our journey in the seven sacred signposts next Wednesday. Until then, see you soon. Bye-bye.